Joshua 24, 14. When you have it, let me hear everybody say amen. 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 Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I want to go back up and, and read the part that I want to focus on today. It said, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Amen. My subject on today is, it's time to make a choice. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to make a choice. today. I may realize that it's time to make a choice. It's time to decree and declare who you're going to live for. Amen. Are you going to live for the devil or are you going to live for God? But today we have to make a choice. Amen. Church, it's time to make a choice whose side we're on. Okay. Either we're on the Lord's side or we're not. Amen. There is no in between. Either we're living for God or we're not. Pastor preached last Sunday, do you know what time it is? Do you realize that we are living in the last and evil days? If you would just stop and turn on the news and see everything that's going on. People killing each other for no reason. The coronavirus is out of control. Everything is going on. People calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. Everything is happening in this, in this world. And we have to realize that we're living in the last and the evil days. Amen. Do you realize that time is moving rapidly? And that at any moment the Lord could come back. And I know some of y'all realize I may say, uh, Brother Shell, they've been saying that for 10, 20, 30 years that the Lord is coming back. But the Lord is sooner to come back than he was 10, 20, and 30 years ago. And you have to uh, realize and recognize that now's the time to make a choice. And I got to get myself together. Because God can come back any time. Like I told y'all, people are dying every single day. Yes. And for them, the Lord has already come back. Yes. And if God was to come back in your life right now, would you be ready? It's time to make a choice. If you don't or do or don't, I'm here to tell you that it's time to look in the mirror and do some self-inventory. It's time to do some self-reflection. It's time to see uh, is your life lined up with the word of God. Are you doing what God has called you to do? Are you living saved? Are you living holy? Are you doing what the Bible has said for us to do? Amen. You have to ask yourself, am I truly living for God? Ask yourself, am I truly Committed to the Lord. Amen. If you are, then keep on keeping on the Lord. Hold on because God has something waiting on you. You have a crown of righteousness waiting on you. But if you are not, then it's time to make a choice. Which side are you on? Are you going to live for the Lord or are you going to live for the devil? There is no in between. There is no, I'm just an innocent bystander. It's one side. Either you're on the Lord's side or you're living for the devil. Amen. You can't just sit here no longer and say, I'm just going to be comfortable where I am. you got to make a choice. Are you going to be sold out for the Lord or are you going to be sold out for the devil? You have to choose. And the days of straddling the fence are over. You can't sit here and be, one minute I'm in, one minute I'm out. I just want to barely be in on the Lord's side, but I still want to do what I want to do. I still want to fornicate. I still want to drink my wine. I still want to go to the club. But then come on Sunday and shout and give God a praise. The devil is a liar. Yes, there is no such thing as half say. you got to make up in your mind that I'm sold out for the Lord. That I'm going to live for Jesus. That God is my everything. You have to make up in your mind and make a choice. Amen. It's heaven or hell. Amen. There's no in between. I tell you before, there is no such thing as a purgatory. When you die, that's it. If you live for God, you're going to heaven. But if you've been living for the devil, you're going to die and go to hell. There is no place where you're going to go and get a chance to get it right. This is your only opportunity to get it right. And you got to make a choice that I'm going to live for God. Sink or swim, live or die. I'm going all the way for the Lord. Thank you, Amen. God. It's time to make a choice. Yes, it is. Either you're in or you're out. you're out. It is of the utmost importance that we choose to serve the Lord. Why? Because in this life, you're going to have trials and tribulations. 
But if you choose the Lord, you have somebody to help you when you're going through those trials and tribulations. You're going to face something, whether you say it or not. The Bible says God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So that means he blesses the just and he blesses the unjust. What trials and tribulations is for the just and the unjust. So uh, whether you're saved or not, you're going to go through something. But the difference is that when you have God living on the inside of you, you have somebody to help you. You have somebody to see you through. Because why? Because God is greater than anything that you can face. Our Sunday school lesson said in the morning, facing life without worry. When you're on the Lord's side, you don't have to worry because you know why God is on your side. But you have to make a choice that I'm going to be sold out for the Lord. You have to make a choice that I'm going to live for God. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, I'm going to be sold out for the Lord. It's time to make a choice. Whom you going to serve this day? All right. It is the most important because none of us is going to live forever. No. We will love to live forever, but one day we got to die. Your, your death day may be tomorrow. It may be 5, 10, 15 years from now. None of us know the day nor the hour when the Lord's going to come back. Nobody knows when your time is over. Whenever you fulfill your purpose here on life, then that's it for you. And I, if I want to fulfill my purpose, I want to fulfill my purpose in the Lord. I want to be everything God calls me to be. I don't want to sit here and live life living for the devil and die and go to hell. What profits a man to gain the whole world but loses his own soul? You got all the money, the cars, everything, but you die and go to hell. You can't take none of that stuff with you. So you got to make a choice that I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than this whole wide world. You can have the riches. You can have everything you want. But I'd rather have Jesus because I know God is the best thing. Yes. And it's like I said, it's time to make a choice. Whom you going to serve? Yes. What is the hesitation? Right. What is keeping you from living, from choosing to live for the Lord? All right. No habit, no pleasure. Nothing in this life is worth you dying and go to hell. Right. I don't care who it is or what it is. Right. Put it down, give it up. God got something better for you. But you got to make a mind that I'm not going to let this habit or this pleasure or this money, whatever it is, I'm not going to put it before the Lord. I'm going to give God my best. I'm going to give God my all because it is the Lord, it was the Lord that blessed me. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? God has blessed me with a great things. Yes. Now why in the world would I put this before God when God is greater than anything? You have to make up in your mind that I'm going to live for God. What's the hesitation? What's keeping you from being sold out for the Lord? What's keeping you from saying, yes, Lord, I surrender? Nothing is worth you dying and going to hell. Not Johnny, not Sally, not the cigarettes, not the club. Nothing is worth you dying and going to hell. Not your job. You sit here working all the time and you're never at church. You're going to end up dying and going to hell because you're trying to chase the paper. The paper ain't going to lead you nowhere but straight to hell because you don't know what Jesus is. You giving everything else your attention, but you ain't giving God none of your attention. You have to make up in your mind that I'm a soul out. God comes first in my life. Amen. There is nothing worth dying going to hell for. The Bible said what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Church, it behooves us to choose the Lord. Why? Because the Lord has been good to us. For, uh, for us not to commit to him wholeheartedly. God's been too good. Why are we not committed to him? We have to be sold out. God wants all of us, not just some of us. God wants all of us. He's the one who loved and woke you up this morning, who's blessed you to, right. to, with the job you got on. Yes. He's the one that's been taking care of you, and you won't even open your mouth and tell God thank you. You won't even live for him. God's been too good for us not to commit wholeheartedly to him. In this chapter, Joshua realized that his purpose in life has been fulfilled, and that soon he would die. Joshua wanted to remind the people to stay faithful and committed to the Lord. Yeah. Joshua brings the tribe of Israel to, uh, to Shechem before the Lord to act a covenant renewal with the Lord. The Lord tells the people through Joshua how he brought out uh, Abraham from among his people. Yeah. Amen. In this chapter, like I said, Joshua realized that he was about to die. He realized that he had done everything that God had called him to do. But before he died, he wanted the people to remind them, hey, stay faithful to God. 
Yeah, we've been at war, but now we're about to enter some peace. But you got to realize to stay committed to the Lord. Stay faithful to him because why? God has been faithful to them. And God has been faithful to us in our lives. God, every time we call on the Lord, God is there for us. He made ways out of no way. He opened doors that are closed in our faith. So we have to remain faithful and stay committed. And if you're not committed, if you're not faithful, today is the day you need to choose to live for the Lord. God tells them in this chapter how he multiplied the descendants of Abraham. How he gave Isaac and uh, how he gave Abraham Isaac and how he gave Esau and Jacob to Isaac. The Lord tells how he blessed Esau and Jacob and how Jacob's children went into Egypt and the children was prosperous and to the new king. God is in this chapter. He's reminding them of the history. He's reminding them everything that God has done for them. God is telling them what he did for them in Egypt, how they was prosperous, how they continued to, to multiply. But the king saw that the people of Israel were so great, that so that he took them and put them in bondage. But when they cried out to the Lord, God heard they cried, and he sent Moses, and he sent Aaron to plague uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And through Moses and Aaron, God delivered and brought the people of Egypt out. He delivered them by uh, sending them through the Red Sea. Pharaoh and them was after them, and God covered them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God will take care of you. And when you committed to God and when you sold out for God, when you seek the Lord, God will cover and he will protect you. God has been too good for us to not be committed to him. I know this is not the message you want to hear, but it's time to uh, make a choice. Whom you going to serve? Are you going to live for God or are you going to live for the devil? You got to know that God is the best thing that's ever that can happen to you. No riches, no silver, no gold, nothing, no person. Nothing is worth dying and going to hell. Choose to live for the Lord. Amen. God reminds them of how when he brought them out of the uh, Egyptians through the Red Sea, he reminded them of the land, of how he brought them into the land of the Amorites, and how the Amorites fought against the children of Israel. But the Lord destroyed them. When you're God's chosen people, God will destroy your enemies. It don't matter if you're surrounded by the enemy. The Lord will deliver you. So who, why would you want to serve a God like that? He take care of you. When your head hurt, his head hurt. The very little things that you care about, God cares about. But you won't even be sold out to him. You have to realize, I'm going to be sold out for God because can't nobody do me like the Lord can. I know some of y'all probably get tired of saying, Brother Sean said that every Sunday, can't nobody do me like God. Because I know that can't nobody do me like God. Why in the world would I go try to look for Johnny or Sally or Sue or whoever on my job or whatever to try to take care of me? Can't nobody take care of me better than the Lord can. So I'm going to be sold out for God. I'm going to live for him because God is so good. Choose who you this day whom you're going to serve. The Lord reminds them of how Balak tries to get Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel. But it was to no avail. See, Balaam wanted Balaam to curse the people of God. But Balaam couldn't do anything. He, he was going over to spy and to see uh, when Balaam was riding on his donkey. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing before him, before Balaam, with the sword. He was ready to take out Balaam. Because he tried to curse the people of God. But the donkey, God opened up the eyes of the donkey. And the donkey went the other way. And then he tried to go another way. The donkey went that way. And finally the donkey just sit down. And he kept hitting the donkey. And the donkey said, hey man, I've been good to you. Why in the world you keep hitting me? Don't you see what I see? And the Lord opened up their eyes and said, I was against you. Because you tried to curse the people of God. Right. You tried to come against my chosen people. But Balaam couldn't do anything. Balaam had to go back to bed and say, this was the Lord saying. The Lord kept blessing him. He blessed him three or four times. And Balaam said, man, all you've been doing is blessing my enemies. Well, when the devil tried to curse you, it's not going to come to pass. But why? You can't curse what God has already blessed. So why in the world would you go live for the devil when the devil can't do nothing for you? Why in the world would you give your heart and your mind and your soul to the devil when the devil ain't going to do nothing but send you straight to hell? You sitting here trying to live and be like the world, but the world is going to send you straight to hell. And you're going to burn in fire forever and ever and ever. But it's time to make a choice. It's time to realize that for God I live and for God I die. Sick or swim, live or die, going all the way with the Lord. And then last, the Lord kept on reminding them of all the victories he had given them. 
He reminded them of his protection. He reminded them of his blessings. He reminded them last that he alone gave them the land which they did not labor. He gave them cities for which they did not build. He gave them vineyards and olive groves for which they did not plant. We can apply that to us today because it was the Lord that blessed you with your job. It wasn't nothing special about you, but God blessed you with the job. He's the one that put a roof over your head. He's the one that put clothes on your back. He's the one that put food on your table. He's the one that put a car for you to drive in. He's the one that healed your body. He's the one that saved you. He's the one that covered you. He's the one that protected you from danger seen and unseen. And you won't even commit to him. Why in the world would you not commit to the one that's been taking care of you all along? But it's time to make a choice. It's time to live for the Lord. Because can't nobody do me like God. Can't nobody hold me in the midnight hour. Can't nobody rock me like you can. Can't nobody do me like God. You still now sit there looking like you're looking. But I will be standing on my feet and say, Lord, I choose you today. Not this day. I'm going to choose the day. Because God has been so good to me. You may worry that I'm going away. You open all doors in my face. And God, I choose you this day. And compare to all bodies. Do me like the Lord says. I'm rocking away the pole. But look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, I don't know about you. But I choose to say the Lord. Joshua said, for me in my mouth, I'm going to say the Lord. And that's my testimony today. For me in my mouth, I'm going to say the Lord. Oh, God. 